Welcome to our lecture online. Here's an example of how to integrate a line integral with a vector field. So the line is represented by the equation x equal y squared. So that's like a parabola, a sideways parabola. And notice that z is constant, so it's only in a two-dimensional field, or I should say a two-dimensional plane. And uh, we have, we're going to multiply this line with the vector field defined as follows. A is x squared in the i direction, y squared in the j direction, plus z squared in the k direction. And we're integrating it from point 1 to point 2. Now notice that from the previous video, we realized that the integral of a vector field multiplied by a smaller line segment along that line dl can be represented as a dot dl times the cosine of theta, or it can also be represented by the x component of the vector field dx plus the y component of the vector field dy plus the z component of the vector field dz. And of course, since z is a constant, dz is zero, so this really then simplifies to the following. This is then equal to the integral of a sub x dx plus a sub y dy because dz is equal to zero. Now let's go ahead and plug in what we know. The x component is x squared, the y component is y squared. So this can now be written as the integral of x squared dx plus y squared dy. Of course, we don't want to integrate an integral where we have two variables, x and y, so we have to somehow replace the y squared with some terms of, of x and dy as well. Now, since we have this relationship right here where we know that x is equal to y squared, we can simply replace the y squared by x, so this then becomes equal to the integral of x squared dx plus x times dy. We're still not quite there yet because we can have a dy here, so to find the value of dy, we can take the differential or the derivative of both sides with respect to x and see what we get. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the d dx of the left side and set it equal to the d dx of the right side, y squared. So the left side, of course, the d dx of x, that becomes 1, is equal to the d dx of y squared, that would be 2y to the first power, times dy dx. Which means if we solve this for dy, we can say, well, the dx goes over here, the 2y goes over here, so dx divided by 2y is equal to uh, dy, so now we can replace dy by dx over 2y, but then still, we don't want a y there. So when we take the square root of both sides here, we can say that the square root of x is equal to y. So this can be plugged in here. So finally, we can say that dx divided by 2 times the square root of x is equal to dy. So now we can make the substitution. Instead of writing dy, we can write this. So let's go ahead and do that. This is now equal to the integral of x squared dx plus x times, and dy can now be written as dx divided by 2 times the square root of x. And simplifying this even more, we can say, well, this is equal to the integral of x squared dx plus x divided by square root of x. Well, we have the 1 half, still 1 half times the square root of x times dx. Or I could simply have said, x to the one-half power, which may be a little bit easier to integrate when we have it in that form. Now we can go ahead and integrate it. Since the variable is x, we can say from x is equal to the x value of 0.1, which is 4, to the x equal to the x value of 0.2, which is 9. All right, let's go ahead and make the, do the integral now. Now this is equal to x cubed divided by 3 plus one-half times x to the three-halves divided by the new exponent 3 halves, evaluated from 4 to 9. Simplifying this a little bit, I can then write this as x cubed over 3 plus 1 half times 3 over 2, nope, not 3 over 2, but 2 over 3, because when you divide by fraction, the same as multiplying by the inverse, and then write this as x to the 3 halves, evaluated from 4 to 9, and of course these twos cancel, and then we have one-third, which we can actually factor out. So this becomes equal to one-third times x cubed plus x to the three-halves from x equals 4 to x equals 9. Now we're ready to evaluate that by plugging the upper limit. This is equal to one-third times 
9 cubed, that's 81, that's I believe 721 if I'm not mistaken. Well, let's check it real quick. 9 times 9 times 9 equals, ooh, 729. Good thing I checked. 729. Yes, that should be right. Plus 9 to the 3 halves. Well, that's the square root of 9 is 3 times 3 is 27. So plus 27 and subtract from that. I'm going to plug in a 4. 4 cubed, that's 64. And then minus, when I plug in a 4, that's 2, that's 8. So one third times that, we get 729 plus 27 minus 64 minus 8. That would be 684. So let's go over here. This is equal to one third times 684. And that looks like it's divisible by 3. So let's take that and divide by 3 equals, and we get 228. So it turns out the value that we get, it's a scalar value. We integrated the line x equal y squared from x equals 4 to x equals 9. With, when we multiply that times the vector field as defined here. Here's the definition of how we integrate across all the line segments along the line, multiply times the vector field. This is probably the easiest format to work with. Then we find the x and the y components, x squared plus y squared. We can forget about the z component because we realized that z was constant. Then manipulating the y squared using this relationship, we can replace the y squared by x, and the dy can also be replaced by this, and then it's just integration from that point on. So there's a nice example of how to do a line integral with a vector field when we multiply the line with the vector field, and that's how it's done.